Over the last seven months, I've been teaching myself Python by programming a chess game. Now that the logic is completed, I'd like to share my journey, a bit about how my game works, why I started this project, and the resources I use to learn the basics of coding. This is my chess game. It's played on a text-based board, which moves around these piece icons. Players type which piece they want to move, and then which board space they'd like to move to. If the game detects any illegal moves, it will prevent the move from happening, print a message to the player stating why it can't be made, and then allow the player to choose another move to make. Before programming chess, I had completed one other coding project, this cable tester. I was working at a small company that made robotic camera systems for researchers. I started out as their assembler, then learned how to run their CNC machine to make the plastic parts. Eventually, a coworker taught me how to solder so I could make some of the cables that connected the robot to its control box. Each side had four pins, meaning there were eight connections in a single cable. Five of these cables per machine and six machines per manufacturing run meant I had to correctly make 240 separate connections in one go. I had wanted to learn Arduino for a long time, so I took it as an opportunity to create a tool and try my hand at some coding. The LEDs were programmed to blink on and off individually from left to right when the circuit was completed. This meant that if I plugged a cable in, wheeled it around a bit, and the LEDs all continued to blink, the connection was at least decent. If they blinked in the correct order, I knew that the connections were in the correct locations. So that was project one. It was fun, pretty basic, and really just an adaptation of the standard LED blink program with some wait time added in. This made me realize that even simple coding projects could be very meaningful and rewarding and particularly useful, even in a manufacturing setting. At the time, I had nothing else planned, but I continued to think back on how much I enjoyed making that tester. Fast forward three years. I had moved to two different cities and been laid off from two different jobs. With no luck on the work search, I finally decided enough is enough. I have all sorts of free time. I want to learn to code. So after brainstorming some ideas, I decided on chess. It was way above my coding skill level and would involve overcoming numerous challenges. Yet I felt inspired by all the people I'd seen online who had learned Python before me, also many of them by programming chess. I knew if I got stuck, I could find help somewhere. So I got to it. My first goal was to get a foundational knowledge of the language. I found a course called Robot Ignite Academy, where you learned elements of Python by programming simulated robots to move and read sensors off of digital brick walls and such. And this was interesting, but it catered more to someone who already knew Python basics. So I struggled through the intro and eventually just became frustrated at my lack of progress. I was in a coffee shop at the time, and the guy sitting next to me saw the code on my screen. He asked me what I was programming, and I told him I was trying to control these robots, but I really didn't know what I was doing. He told me about a Udemy course called the Python Bible, and right afterwards I bought it and watched the first video. Instantly hooked me. Three afternoons later, I had completed the course, having written several short programs, including a tic-tac-toe game, which I thought was pretty great. The first self-programmed part of my chess game was going to be the game board. Seeing the board would make debugging much easier, so this was a great place to start. Or at least it would have been if I had known the proper way to venture off on my own. As many new programmers do, I gathered bits of code from YouTube, Stack Overflow, and several other knowledge bases, crammed it all together, and got close to printing a board on screen. The thing was, I really didn't know how any of the elements affected one another, and nothing worked consistently. I then reworked my approach from trying to mash code snippets together to find useful code snippets, understand them line by line, and then add more. And the difference between the approaches is subtle, but the results could not have been more different. Slowly but surely, I retyped example code I had found, then added my own, making sure to work through every statement along the way. This was my first major breakthrough. Taking the time to understand your code seems like such a basic necessity, yet you can find countless stories about people who did not follow this and then had problems later on. Once they backed up and looked over their code, they were able to make progress and became much better prepared to solve issues down the line. My second major breakthrough came when I began implementing object-oriented programming, or OOP. 
This is a style of programming that focuses on creating and manipulating data structures such as classes. A single object that takes on the features of a class is called an instance. Knowing that each player in my chess game had pieces with nearly identical characteristics, I set up classes for each piece, then created instances of those classes to populate my board. Until then, I had been manipulating letters printed on the board directly through layers of if statements alone. That quickly became messy, warranted a complete rework of my code, and OOP was the fix I needed. So after six full days of work, I had finally reconfigured my game to use classes, and as a bonus, at the same time, I had also begun packaging various parts of my code into functions, which allowed me to easily repeat segments of code without having to rewrite them. Several days later, I finished programming the basic movements of each piece, and I was so excited writing movement rules that I hadn't actually tested several hundred lines of code. <laughs> you can imagine how many errors I ran into when I finally began doing so. So many errors. This led me to my third breakthrough. Test your code along the way. As I became more confident in my knowledge of Python, I could write longer and longer segments before testing since I knew what the results would be. But I always regularly tested my code in some form or another after working through that wave of errors. Over the course of four more months, I repeated the process of coding a new function, testing it, then adding another. My largest challenge was, without a doubt, getting the game to recognize when checkmate had occurred. The thing about check is that you need to know beforehand if it will occur on a move, since you're not allowed to move your king into check or expose it to check by moving another piece. This meant I needed to effectively create two boards, one that's actually being played on and displayed, and a copy which is refreshed each move and used to determine if check has or will occur. Checkmate then turned up the complexity one step further, since to determine checkmate, I had to find out all of the potential moves of every other piece on the board. That took nearly two weeks to figure out, with all sorts of functions being modified or added to the game, but a bit of perseverance did the job in the end. I made some final bug fixes to sort out rooks duplicating themselves when castling for some reason, And finally, the game was complete. After 233 hours of education and programming time spanning six and a half months, I played my first full game of chess with zero errors. To make sure I was as comprehensive as possible, I tested out special moves, pawn promotions, movement of all the pieces, initiating and eliminating check, and anything else I could think of that might break the game. Nothing did, and I couldn't have been happier. Undoubtedly, my game has more errors that I simply haven't found yet, as well as code that I could consolidate or completely eliminate. At this point though, I'm comfortable moving on to the next phase of the project, which is making a graphical interface for the game. I'll be using a module called tkinter to create this version, so stay tuned for an upcoming video when it's completed. In case you are also looking to learn Python, I highly recommend you check out Runestone Academy's course, How to Think Like a Computer Scientist. I'm halfway through the course now, and even though the vast majority of the material up to this point I already know, it's a fantastic refresher, and I've learned a lot of new stuff as well. Take it for a spin, or try out the Python Bible like I mentioned earlier. I would highly recommend you look into both as they each have a ton to offer. The Python language and how to think like a computer scientist are both free, and the Python Bible is often on sale for less than $15, so no matter what you choose, you really can't go wrong with either. I'll leave links to everything in the description. So let's recap with some tips to keep in mind if you decide to learn Python. Number one, know what each line of code does. It's fine to look for answers on Stack Overflow, just make sure that if you copy any code, you know exactly why you're adding it to your project. It'll save you lots of headaches and debugging time later on. Number two, a few dollars for a quality training course is money well spent. There are countless free tutorials out there for learning Python. 
the difficulty comes when you have to piece all those together and integrate the lessons they teach. When everything is laid out for you, especially while learning the fundamentals, you can save a lot of time and frustration for a very low cost. Number three, learn object-oriented programming. So much of computer science is based around the concept of chunking, or breaking up a program into chunks that can then be called to interact with one another. Programming using OOP and function calls will catapult your coding ability way beyond what you could ever achieve with if statements alone. Number four, test your code. Every single programmer in existence writes bugs into their code at some point or another. You will too, so be diligent with your tests and remember that debugging is an inherent process when creating or modifying any program. Number five, learning to code is a marathon, not a sprint. I call creating a full game with no major errors a project for the sake of conversation. Remember though that along the way, coding each function is a project in and of itself with additional trial and error involved. Break down your program into manageable chunks, then code one after the other. It's much better to make small, continual progress than to try to reach the end result from the start, get frustrated, and stop trying. I want to leave you with several important life lessons this project has taught me so far. Lesson one, set your mind on something you enjoy and take the first step. Whether you're looking to code, bake, draw, or run faster, set a goal, then outline some of the milestones you'll need to achieve to reach it. These will change over time as you progress, and that's okay. The point is to have a measurable end result, because when you define an end condition, you give yourself direction. In my case, that end goal was a working chess game. Despite numerous mistakes along the way, continually reminding myself of that goal helped me push ahead and eventually succeed. Lesson two, take breaks. Working smart is critical to developing new skills. The key word though is smart. Working hard comes with the territory, but too much will cause you to overload yourself. Take it from me as this project was nearly stopped dead in its tracks from overwork and subsequent burnout. Nobody can constantly be on 24 seven and expect to sustain that in the long term. Even when pursuing your passions, there are many other important parts of life. Talking with loved ones. Can you hear me now? How about now? Enjoying coffee in the morning. Exercising. And doing mindless hobbies with no goal in mind. are all great uses of time. Neglect these and you'll quickly lose steam with your passion projects. On the other hand, live a well-rounded life and you'll find more satisfaction and success in each aspect of it. Lesson three, enjoy the little things. It's frustrating when a project stagnates. When it does, take a step back and remember the successes you've had along the way. For example, when I first started coding the chessboard, I couldn't seem to get any of the syntax right. Of course, how would I? This was my first time ever coding in Python without a video guiding me. I remembered that fact, then reminded myself that I had already finished the Python Bible course and had even been able to code tic-tac-toe. Coding is hard and reflecting on past achievements throughout the process was one of the ways I kept up my enthusiasm. Give yourself the same acknowledgement and I promise you, you'll enjoy the process more as well as find it much easier to make progress even when the going gets tough. I hope you took something valuable from this video, whether it was one of the tips or life lessons, a new project idea, or simply a few minutes of entertainment. Let me know in the comments what you did and didn't like about it. Please consider subscribing for more projects, and most importantly, thank you for watching.
Chippy, look out. Go there. Go up. Go up. Go up. Come on. Go up. Go up there, buddy. Go up. 